Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to the review of Precambrian, the fourth album by the band The Ocean, also known as The Ocean Collective. Today we're celebrating the 15th anniversary of the record, so I decided to go back and see if it still holds up or not. I actually don't remember when I first started listening to this band, it must have been like 8, maybe 10 years ago. Either it was recommended to me by a friend or I found it on my own. Since then I've been paying close attention to everything they release. When it comes to this band, all of the music and lyrics are written by Robin. He's the mastermind behind this project. And on the first couple of the albums there were a lot of musicians playing here. Each album of this project is focused on the periods of the earth. This one as you can easily deduce is about Precambrian period. The album is split into two discs. The first one is more heavy and energetic and the second one is more doomy and gloomy. But don't forget the fact that this is a progressive metal band, so the length of this record is over 80 minutes long. Also a hilarious thing to talk about is that they've recorded this one in Oceanland studio. You know, the band is called The Ocean, Ocean Studio, Berlin, Germany, Wolfenstein. Let me show you the personal as well. This is a big lineup as you can see, less people will attend the Elon Musk funeral. The production is tight, everything is mixed well, it's clean but heavy at the same time. Master is good as well. The message is diverse, songs are about various topics, it's mostly philosophical stuff but we also get some tracks about capitalism, consumerism. It's like the Joker, society bad, people bad, nature good. Structure wise the songs are progressive, lots of changes here and there. Musically it's a hybrid of sounds, we have some progressive metal, doom metal, even death metal, lots of things. The first song, The Long March of the Yes Man, sounds very similar to Meshuga. It's heavy, I love the vocalist here, his growls are amazing. The instrumental work is also solid. What can I say? A great opening, 9 out of 10. The Great Void is my second favorite song on this record. I enjoy everything here, from the instrumental work which is flawless, amazing drumming, bass, guitars, everything, to the vocals, great growling, amazing atmosphere, and the lyrics. This song has my favorite lyrics on the entire record. It's basically a big fuck you to people that just go and consume everything without any thought. 10 out of 10. Man and the Sea has that punk rockish vibe at the beginning. I really enjoy it, especially the tempo changes. It's fast, it's interesting. Love this track. 9 out of 10. Legions of Winged Octopi. I have no idea what the lyrics are about here, but it's my fourth favorite song here. Everything is just great. I love the riffs especially here. And the structure. The song is interesting no matter how many times you repeat it. 10 out of 10. To burn the duck of doubt. That's the duck. It's screaming. I'm also screaming because this is my favorite song on this record. From the amazing structure to the epic riffs, amazing vocals. Like the vocalists are killing it here. This is the best performance on this record. 10 out of 10. Easily. And this is where the disc one ends. If I had to review just this disc, then I would give it an excellent score. Every song had a different vibe and atmosphere, and I've enjoyed them all. So let's get on to the disc number two, which is more, I don't know, artistic? Or should I say autistic? Sidarian is an intro. It's almost two minutes long, and why does it even exist when the seventh track has that same exact melody still at the beginning. I'm giving it 5 out of 10. As you know, I don't like intros. Untimely Meditations is my third favorite song on this thing. I am not that big of a fan of that beginning melodies, but right on the 6th minute the song just explodes. That part, like 6th minute and 7th second, that's when it starts. The progressive death metal melodies. I love them. Amazing atmosphere, that growling vocals are just astonishing. I love this song. Sure the beginning wasn't that good, but the last 3 or 4 minutes were out of this world. 10 out of 10. For the great blue coat now reigns, 
continues that amazing vibe of the previous song. I love those death metalish elements here and there. What I don't like is some of that mellow sad parts here and there. This symphony is good, don't get me wrong. I like the orchestra, the symphonies, cool stuff. This is 9 out of 10. What I don't like is Staterian, or however you pronounce it. It has some samples as vocals from some movie. It's over 6 minutes long and I'm like, why is this here? This is disrupting the flow. I am falling asleep to this thing. So it's not bad, but I would cut it out from the record. 5 out of 10. Lake Disappointment is truly a disappointment. This is my least favorite song on the record. Not because it's bad, but because the calm and mellow part is very long. I think it's like 3 or 4 minutes at the beginning? What are you doing? I want to listen to music. After that, it picks right up. It's interesting, it's heavy again, amazing vocals, and right up to the end, I enjoy it. But that beginning, nope. So 8 out of 10. The Profundis, yet again, has an amazing atmosphere, that death metalish sound mixed with some doom metal. I love the symphony here, everything. Every part, the bass, the guitars, the drums. This is a stellar song, 9 out of 10. Mount Sorrow is very similar to that Disappointment song. The calm sounds are just way too long. I know that you're trying to build an atmosphere, but it's too long. It's making me lose focus and fall asleep. Cut down those slow middle parts. Give us some more energy, some more anger. This track is still good, I just want to point out that those mellow parts are too much for me. 8 out of 10. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind is an interesting song because it has a lot of tempo changes. The first minute or two, again, it's just boring snooze fest. But then something funny happens, we have some mathcore sound I would say. Those very fast changing elements. This is my favorite part of the song. Then yet again, it goes back to that doom metalish atmosphere. This is a good song, but I still think it was too calm for me. So 8 out of 10. And the final track, Cryogenian. I actually really enjoyed this one. It's a classical instrumental piece. I love the piano here and everything. This is how you make an outro. 9 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is various and the flow is digestible. Replayability? Yeah, it's a great album. The first disc is excellent, the second one is just good. I wish some of the songs were removed from that second disc, like Staturian and Sidarian. The only flaw that I can see in this record is that they rely too much on those very calm, mellow parts. Maybe that's just doom metal, I don't listen to that music that much, but it gets on my nerves when the song is 10 minutes long and I have to wait 4 minutes until something fucking happens. Everything else was perfect, I love the vocal performances of all the vocalists, the guitar work was marvelous, the bass parts amazing, the drumming stellar throughout the record, the symphonic elements, I've truly enjoyed them. The only song where the vocals were kinda just good was the Stenian one, the singing in that one wasn't good to me, everything else perfect. I recommend this album to anyone, especially if you love progressive metal or doom metal music. I wish the second disc had more energy like the first one, because the first one, I loved it. I just loved it. So that's all from me. I think The Ocean is going to release a new album, like next year, or maybe this one. We're going to see. I cannot wait for it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in my other reviews. Bye!